Right, welcome back everyone. Um, another riveting video on inverter and um, batteries. So what we're going to do is we're going to test what some people suggested um, in some posts in the previous video around where to put the CT clamp. So originally I've got the CT clamp around the load and the inverter is pretty much essentially plugged straight into the wall and um, off that the load and then the CT clamp. So what we're going to do in today's video is change that around to hopefully fix our problem with the limiter. What we're going to do is um, um, put the CT clamp around um, the cable before the inverter and before the load. So essentially it's going to be say at the, at, at the switchboard. Um, we'll do this test first before I extend the cable for the um, in, CT clamp and we'll see what happens and if this works then um, then we'll move on to the next stage which is also extending the, the CT cable to get that back into the main switchboard inside the house. So what I'll do um, is I'll just change some cables around. Um, so if you can actually see, I'm not too sure if you can on the video, but um, anyway, this is the main cable, pretty much just an extension cord running off an outlet. So what I'll do is I'll put our um, CT clamp arrangement, which is just around that live feed. It looks a bit messy right now, but that is okay. So I'll just quickly untangle this a little bit. I'm doing this pretty much live on the video rather than kind of doing it beforehand. So load with, with the, the cable with the CT clamp straight into the, um, let's just turn it off at the wall first. Okay, so straight into the extension cord. Right, see so our CT clamp is now around the main cable. So I'll just push that back in here a bit so that's out of the way. With this I'll go just a double splitter. From here I'll go straight to the, in, the inverter. Right, so then, so inverter, splitter, straight to the CT clamp before going to the outlet. Uh, off this we'll run our, um, our load, which will be the same as before. Um, and I'll plug our load into this. So what I've got currently is just a 15 watt light bulb which I'll change out to a 60 watt and 100 watt um, and we'll see what the difference it does. So pretty much the CT clamp now is before everything um, rather than kind of after. So right with these things I might just stick this somewhere so that you can also, oh, in fact the light will be a bit annoying but I'll stick it here Anyway, so it's kind of off frame a little bit. Okay, um, nothing's turned on right now, so let's turn the AC on. Uh, now I don't actually have a switch on that on my load. Um, okay, well my switch will be unplugging it, unplugging it back in again. Okay, so currently we've just got the inverter CT clamp um, outlet. What we'll do now is we'll turn on the DC. Uh, I think I've connected that back on again. Now I have charged the last three packs, so the voltage should be better <laughs> rather than running flat um, packs. So I think that's right. Let's double check. We'll put our positive and negative around the correct way. We'll turn our multimeter on. Okay, so 79.1 volts, that's because the rest of the packs have now dropped a little bit in voltage. So the bottom three are charged, but the top, or the, the other 18 are, have dropped a little bit in capacity, uh, oh, sorry, in um, voltage. Um, but that's okay. And it's okay for now. Um, okay, so we've got on our screen here 17 watts, uh, which is our reading from our CT clamp. Um, what I'll do now is I might just zoom that in. In fact, I'll just zoom in into, oh, there we go. All right, it's close enough. Um, as long as you can see it, that's the main thing. 
Okay, so this video is obviously not completely organized, but that's okay. Just bear with me. Okay, so what we'll do is I will plug in that 15 watt load, which is just that light bulb. Hopefully it doesn't blink out the, the screen with the light beside it. Okay. So that's good. 11.7, that's really good. Um, what we'll do next, what we'll do next is change that light bulb out for a bigger one, because I'm really happy with that. So that's a good start. So you guys might be right. Uh, okay, so I'll just unplug that. I always unplug before plugging in light bulbs. Um, how many watts is this? Okay, so it's not that one. Sorry, just bear with me. Um, da -da -da -da. Okay, 100 watt light bulb. Just unplugging this. That there. 100 watts. Okay, you can see the screen. Okay, so plugging the 100 watt light bulb in now, 100 watt load. I'm doing 13. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm doing 13. That's okay because I actually stuck. Um, I'll fix that a little bit actually in a second. So you'll see what I mean. Um, that's good. It's making a bit of a. You'll be able to hear this in the audio actually. As it's limiting, on off, on off, on off very quickly. But that's good. 113.1 perfect um, okay what I'll do is we'll keep that load plugged in and I'll just run away so I'm running across the video but that's you really only want to see the screen anyway you don't really need to see me Oops. plug both plugging one thing in Unplug the inverter. Not a good idea. Okay. So that's good. Okay, so we just have the light bulb plugged in, the 100 watt light bulb, and we're registering 113 watts. That's fine. Um, I've got two, I've got the cable f put through the CT clamp twice rather than once. Normally it would be once. So. Uh, okay, so what I've done is I've plugged in a uh, um, heat gun and I'll just put it on level 1 on the heat gun which should be around um, 1300 watts or somewhere around there and we have the light bulb plugged in. Okay, so that's registering pretty good. Now if I put the heat gun on full, if I take it off, that's a half. And back to off, just behind the white light bulb gun. Beautiful. Just what we want to see. I'll just zoom the video out. So, we've made some progress. Um, happy with that. What I'll do now is I'll just quickly turn the um, inverter off. I'll just unplug this, um, this or unwind, uh, unwind this extra cable that's, that's around the CT clamp. And then we'll get a better reading of what we're actually seeing. So just two seconds while I do that. So what I mean by that is this cable here, so I've got a single cable, 240 volt cable that comes out and around the CT clamp twice. So it only should go around once. So this is how you kind of trick the CT clamp in thinking that there's more load than you've actually got plugged in. You just wind it around multiple times. Um, 
it's a great way of testing, um, especially when you want to get over 2,000 watts. Um, it's easier to just wind it around twice and you end up with 4,000 watts, across the CT anyway. Okay, so we just have the CT clamp just around the single strand of wire. And if that stays in there, it would be really handy. Okay, it's dangling, but it's dangling okay. It's slightly out of view, but you don't really need to see it. Okay, 100 watt light bulb, CT clamp around one. It should be more accurate, I would say, to the 100 watts. If anything, it would be nice if it was below it. I'm not too sure, too sure if you see that. Um. You can probably see that clear enough there. Yeah. Okay, so the 100 watt light bulb, the good thing about using a 100 watt um, light bulb is that you know it's 100 watts. Um, where if you use other bits and pieces, um, it's just hard to know. So 100 watt light bulb, 60 watt light bulb, etc. You know it's going to use that, that much power. So 100 watts, we're ending up with 77. So that's good. As long as the number on the screen that the inverter sees is lower, that means when we actually plug it into our house, um, it's not going to be trying to put out, um, you know, if the house is using 500 watts, at least it's not going to be trying to put out 550 watts, in which case that 50 watts would be wasted. Um, just zoom it out. So that's pretty stable. 77 watts, 78, and it's holding at that, which is really, really good. Um, that's, in fact, that's perfect. It's exactly what we want. So that light bulb there is actually making everything else seem darker on the camera. I'll just put that behind the camera a little bit. Okay, we'll look a bit brighter. Um, okay, well that's fantastic. Um, I suppose a big thank you and a big thumbs up for everyone that helped out uh, with posting those comments, that was just kind of a, the little click that I needed to make in my head um, into actually testing that. Um, it's something I should, probably should have thought of, but it wasn't. So the way I had it set up before was I had the CT clamp around the load. Now what I've got is the CT clamp before the inverter and before the load. Um, in other words, high up the food chain. So that's really good, um, and that's fixed our problem. So it must do an offset between what the load is and what the seat uh, and what the inverter is putting out, and then it must use that calculation to figure out what the uh, inverter needs to deliver. So that solves our problem, and that means that we can finally almost get up and running on this. Um, I haven't sorted out my charger just yet, and I also haven't sorted out um, a longer CT clamp cable. So what I'll do next is I'll um, create a longer CT clamp cable. I've got a couple of um, connectors um, that means that I won't need to cut the CT, uh, the CT cable that's currently there. I won't need to cut it in half and just extend it. What, I'd, what the, the better solution would be to, is to have the proper plugs on each end and that way you're pretty much just plugging an extension cable in there. Um, well, it's a bit hot on the carpet. Um, so I'll do that in the next video and we'll see if an extended CT clamp cable uh, and how long we can go before the CT clamp reading um, is becomes inaccurate, maybe, or um, or uh, it doesn't read correctly, or I don't know. Um, the CT clamp cable is not meant to have a great length; it's only meant to be a meter or two. Um, however, the garage versus the house, it's it's about 20 meters, 25 meters. So, especially when you kind of go down and around and up walls and under the ground, we're going to have to take that cable eventually in the, in, in the future, but in the short term we can just hang it out of the window and do some testing um, correctly with the, the main house. So I'll leave this video for now, a big thumbs up again and a big thank you to everyone. Um, 100 watts in, 100 watts on the load, 87 to 90 something, um, it's hanging around. So the limiter is working correctly, it's, wor it's working just under 100 and as I said, you don't want it to be above, you want it to be on uh, just under, um, and which is exactly what it's doing. So this is going to work perfect. This is going to be exactly what we need to do. Um, and yeah, it's um, currently the voltage is 78.8 or 0.7.
Um, that's fluctuating. What I need to do is I need to come up with a temporary solution around charging the 20S pack. Um, I've got a couple of ideas using a boost converter. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll create a temporary solution and then a long-term solution. But first of all, we need to obviously start charging the packs and using my IMAX B6 on every cell um, takes days and weeks. So I need to come up with a temporary solution for now. But anyway, thank you everyone and um, I will see you in another video very shortly.